And here we are on session 21 of the Sphere of Power campaign. Uh, party now has managed to get themselves past the maze below and past a group of ghouls that wanted to feast on their flesh. And so now we are ready to continue exploring. Yeah, and we had to like pause the conversation with the dragonborn. <laughs> before we went to bed that's uh, right we, we had to take off that's why we paused it so yeah you were supposed we needed to have the uh, party interaction at this point i had to go get vaccinated <laughs> yep hopefully that went smoothly oh it was brilliant I mean, it was over and done in like 10 minutes nice just do you just have one so far or have you gotten your second uh second one is middle of the month gotcha gotcha all right, so after uh, their initial engagement um, where the Dragonborn was being chased by the uh, pair of ghouls um, and ran into the party, you now have vanquished the two undead creatures and find yourself face to face with a new um, companion, uh, potentially. <laughs> So. I just remember somebody had some awesome questions for him, and it wasn't me. I don't remember what the <laughs> question was. <for. laughs> but I remember the awesome question was said, but he wasn't here, and I was like, that's great, and I should have written it down. <laughs> well, I do have the recording, so we could go back to that if necessary. <laughs> uh, the problem of not being able to game every week. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But even yeah, if we no. wanted to go back to every week, I couldn't because I have another game on alternate Saturdays. Mm. <laughs> See, what's nice for me is most of the... alternate Saturdays. It's fun. Oh, nice. I'm most of my other games are packed with gaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most of the time when we play, you know, the same evening, I'll play a game seven, eight o'clock at night. So. But yeah. As much as I would like to play more, I, I frequently feel like even this is, um, I'm barely able to keep up with the, the time demands. And it's not that it well, puts that's... So much on me, but that there's just so much that I got going around, on around me. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's the hard part about DMing is it, it is, it's not just logging in and tweaking your character sheet. <laughs> like, yep. There's so much more to it. <laughs> this is very true. I'm so suck it. work takes a while. Yeah. Uploading images, recently. getting everything situated, like goddamn. <laughs> yep. And most recently with this, I have level, yet I'm to really to get continue. into that part. I, I have yet to get really get into that part because all I do is a series of one shots. <laughs> I, 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 so far, I just run one shots for groups of random people. So I have never run a camp campaign before. Oh. So do you reuse the same one shots all the time, or are you constantly coming up with new stuff? Um, I, I reuse the same ones and it's usually with <laughs> different groups of people who haven't been, who haven't played through it with me. Yeah. And that's a great way to get um, maximum playability out of your what, content. Oh yeah. And then you don't got to do any prep yeah. work. You're ready. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely an argument for it. You know, you just want yeah, to sure. the first time through, you want to be familiar with it, but you know, it's definitely a lot different than having to, uh, you know, create all the encounters and the tables and all the maps and set right. all the account, uh, all the, the pins and everything up. And in this case, between. Yeah, uh, no, my, the... my next step is to, my next step is to run one of the um, published campaigns that I already have fantasy ground mods for, <laughs> um, because the bulk of the uploading and setting pins and organizing encounters is already done. And I just have to make sure that I know where to find everything. That's cool. I, I do have to say I enjoyed running Lost Mine of Fandelver. I thought that was very well <laughs> laid out and had a lot of depth to it. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. And I, it's, yeah, I like it. It was a good one to get used I, to. I will I say that Wick me. didn't enjoy getting shot by a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he did not, but I, I miss those characters. I do too. I, I I do miss the uh the randomness of the wild magic. That was kind of fun. 
Well, yeah, we had some know interesting results too. Turn myself into a potted plant or something. <laughs> I have a wild magic barbarian that hasn't got to second level yet to use like the wild magic on his attacks and stuff. And I'm pretty interested in seeing how that works out. That does sound fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good time. I wanted right, to play with so... the wild magic so much. Sorry. <laughs> We had fun with I had fun with those tables though that's for sure. All right, so the two Goliath twins and Mizram in kitty form are uh, the ones closest to the Dragonborn, and I guess at this point you're each wondering whether or not the fight is actually over or if you still have more opponents. So we did bring him into our we did bring him into our magic uh, tent though. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, we we decided that you're going to do so, but there was also the issue that you didn't have a chance to actually have your initial interaction with him um, before you had, before Albie had to leave for his. Okay. So we're kind of just you know coming back to the that that okay. point of of our life. Okay, we're backtracking just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, didn't something that funky fleshing, <sighs> filling out or fleshing in the details? Yeah. All right, so Albi, you're kind of on the spot here. This is this is your cue to say something uh, or make make and some you've got a humorous. Well, quiz. at this point, thanking you all for the assistance of dealing with the ghouls or whatever those were, uh, and offering my healing services for anybody that needs them. Oh, healing, including myself. I like, <laughs> yeah, I think I need some healing. Oh yeah, I do. <laughs> Redreth has settled himself on the floor to build the, the dome and just kind of gives a wave as he settles down and with his back against the wall to make the dome. Yeah, some healing would definitely uh, earn you entry into our dome. <laughs> but I'm curious what brought you to the pyramid. How did you find yourself here? Uh, I was actually working with a group of mercenaries um, out of Baldur's Gate, if I remember right. Let me go back to my notes here. Uh, originally from On, working with Baldur's or, uh, mercenaries out of Baldur's Gate, uh, hunting wyverns hmm. and collecting tales of proof of service. After returning to collect our fee, there was some disagreement and somehow I had offended somebody that we were working with and uh, was teleported into this desert. Wandered around for a couple of evenings and ended up finding the tomb, or what I'm assuming is a tomb. The pyramid. And went, yeah, I went to rest in a room that looked like a worship room with a couple of braziers that were on fire. Apparently, I got too close to one of them and ended up someplace else. I had an oh. encounter with the Minotaur that I barely survived. And then wandering around, came across another square room with a dome circular ceiling to rest. And then woke up there and found myself here. <laughs> hmm. Wait, did you say Minotaurs? Did you kill it? Yes. Okay, cool. I was going to say, is there one of them fucking things running around here right now? <laughs> that might not be good. You didn't loot any treasure, did you? Uh, no, I've spent most of my time here pretty much uh, trying to not get killed. How long have you been No here, looting you know? the treasure. Nothing. No, I haven't found or taken anything. Good. Yep. Yeah, that's bad news. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> as far as how long I've been here, I would only fathom a guess maybe a couple of days or a week. I don't know. I wonder if that's I know I was same. in the desert for a couple of couple of nights, or at least a couple of days before I ended up finding the the tomb or pyramid. I wonder if it's the same group that we spoke to before we got here that was looking for their compatriots. Now, I I don't want to necessarily direct a conversation here, but I would think at least one of you would point out that hey, we're from the Sword Coast too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we, we can too. make our way back together. 
Yes. Would you like to join us? <laughs> if you'll have me, that would be wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. We can safety in numbers. Cleric. Are you a cleric? I'm a healer. Yes. Okay. Cool. Good deal. Yeah, we could use a healer. Now, this is your opportunity to promote your faith, cleric. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that I haven't quite figured out what my faith is yet, but uh, right, right now I'm a non-denominal cleric. I'm finding cool. my way in the world. That was part of my class. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Good deal. Yeah, I'll just go, once I see the domes up, I'll just wander in and sit down and chew on a piece of jerky or something. Actually, just to, uh, to be clear about it, you guys all have to be within the 20-foot uh, diameter of the dome when it's formed or you won't be able to get in. So that's okay. pretty much how it works. Everybody who's inside is in and everybody who's not is out. Once you're inside, you can go, you can come and go. You've kind of been mm. keyed to it, but right. uh, you have to be inside while it's being formed. Right. We'll step this way, Dragonborn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I have a <laughs> Third level mass healing word spell. Ooh. Ooh. And since Excuse I'm little, pretty that. beat the shit already, um, <laughs> myself and everybody else. Yeah, that could be useful because we have three people with injuries. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, Rather severe again, injuries. Thank you very much for saving my ass in my absence because I pretty much was down to like nothing in hit points when I left and Keith said, oh, well, you did a good thing. You, you ended up killing, doing the killing blow and everybody else kind of took care of things. I'm like, great. So I'm not dead after my first adventure. <laughs> All right. Wait, way to start the game off and leave halfway through. It was awesome. <laughs> well, you might um, think about commenting on that massively critical blow that, uh, that Varric landed on uh, one of them. Um, oh yeah, that had to have been visually impressive. In, in well, that and the archer. I'm, I, as DM, I'm still pretty amazed by the amount of damage you did on that hit. Yeah, it was pretty dope. <laughs> so, can I discern what kind of creature we were fighting? So, because I might rename my flail. <laughs> Or do I know what kind of creature we were fighting? Oh, you mean what they were? Yeah. Yep. Because <sighs> they're gone now, right? There's not even any remains. They just yeah, kinda... they, they just vaporize. So yeah, basically it's about whether or not any of you would have heard of enough of a description of them in the past. I mean, they are somewhat common as far as undead go, but you know, let's just do a straight up intelligence check for everyone. If uh, anyone gets over a, thir a 13 or over, then you know, you, you figure out what they are. Ooh, I didn't. <laughs> Did it roll it? I need a uh, screen continue, Jim. Here we go. Thank you, sir. I don't know if it yep. put in my... So, Fekish, Kaelili, Haig. That seems like most of you anyway. Yeah, it didn't catch mine. But yeah, these were actually... You can, you can also just double click on the... Oh, that's right. That's right. These were actually wraiths. Hmm. All right. hmm. Cool. Is it sending my rolls to the chat? Oh, you didn't actually drop it in the chat window. You dropped it on the combat tracker. Oh, okay, my bad. Okay, I see. My bad. Yeah, it was a shit roll either way. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think if somebody mentions that to me, I'll just like grab the, you know, the ball end at the end of the chain and just, you know, the flail is now going to be called Wraith Bane. <laughs> oh, there you go. Nice. From that smash. I definitely yeah. like it. Uh, <laughs> hell yeah I have I may have missed the last five to ten minutes of conversation just to say I uh, <laughs> fell asleep in my recliner <laughs> long night 
Better get some coffee, bud. <laughs> it's just been uh, it's been nonstop with uh, the back room. So <laughs> I only I only have till May seventeenth to get all to get three rooms remodeled to get the other half of my renovation money. So a lot of my spare time is focused on renovation. Clock's ticking. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yep. Gotcha. Well, folks, for good reason. So, um, yeah, I would probably safely say that this is the first time any of you have encountered them, but um, you definitely have heard tales of them, or at least a few of them. So a few of you do, oh, know, yeah. do strongly suspect that. So that was a wraith. Damn. <laughs> they were nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now the key question. Ah, uh, that looks like you're going to be lucky enough. So, <laughs> something happens, but fortunately not until about seven hours after your rest. So, I am going to trigger a long rest. Sweet. <laughs> That's a how do I cast the mass healing on everybody? All right, you're going to have to target everyone first in the party. Bring up your character sheet so I'm looking at the right thing. Um... Who needs healing? <laughs> Varg. <laughs> I could use some healing if you're casting the spell before we do our long rest. I could use some. Yeah, it looks like it's Varric and you, Kaylee, and Beckish need the healing. Everybody else, the other two of us are okay. Or the three of us. Next question is, how do I select you guys? Hold, hold down control and then click on each one of the party members that need healing. On the, <coughs> on the map. shared screen? Or on the map. Yeah. That's usually the easiest way to select them. And you, it depends if you've got your character selected. You may have to click your character first and then control click them. Okay. Maybe. Not and your combat selected. tracker sh should change to say targeting. Who, who you have targeted. Yeah. Right now it doesn't look like I'm selecting anybody. Yeah, I don't see anything <laughs> coming up on this side. Um. Okay. Go. Um. On your. Um. You see in the. Do you see the. Um. The screen share from the Zoom. Uh huh. Um. You see how there's that toolbar there? Do you have that toolbar on yours? Uh. Not on mine now. Well, no, I've got it on the Zoom share, but. But not on yours yet. Um, he's clicking the toggle toolbar button for you to show you where on your map to find it. I don't even see the map on mine. Oh, well, that would help. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we can start okay. with resharing. That'll make that easier. Ah, or double click the map. token spot on the character sheet. That yeah. also works. Yeah. Right. As Alex just said. And keep in mind that your. Um, your portrait is the one on the left. Your token is the one on the right. When okay. you're looking at your so, character sheet. Varric. If you've got the map open and that toolbar is available, there's a button labeled target friendly units. If you click on that, it should target all the friendlies in the, on the map. Yep, that worked. All right. All right. All right, so now you now, go to the actions tab on your character sheet. And he it doesn't hurt if he's targeting all of us. Uh, it's not going to No, because more. if you're not if you're not needing healing, then it won't heal you because you're okay. already healed. I'm, yeah, some some spells only, you know, have a limited number of targets, that's all. I just Got want it. to make sure it goes to the right people. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've got everybody targeted. All right, now go to and... your character sheet and go yeah. down to the actions tab 
Yeah. And scroll down to your spell. You're doing mass healing word. Yep. Okay. And at the very bottom there, your mode should be combat and your display should be actions. Yep. Okay. So then right next to mass healing word, you should see that little plus sign or first aid icon. Yeah. And you click on it. Boo. <laughs> that was very anticlimactic. One point for everybody. Why is why only a D four on that? That didn't seem right. I don't know. Because it's mass healing word. Healing word is a D four. Oh, okay. Boo. <laughs> Sorry, thought that was going to be more, more useful. Plus, your spell casting. It is when you roll better. <laughs> well, yeah. But wait a minute, let's see. Everyone only got one. He sh it should have his spell casting ability modifier also added to it, though. So I probably don't that have is the correct. same code right then. So somebody will need to go in and edit that. Spell casting modifier, yeah. So. And what is oh, that? Yeah, one hit it's wisdom, right? Uh, I believe so, yes. Yeah. Uh, Targets, hit points, heal, 1d4, plus... There should, be a, a, there should be a box that you can cycle through until it says... Um, uh, Wisdom. It would ability. be easier if I could just see the sheet so I could see what's wrong with the sheet. I think it's 1d4 plus 4 if it's multiple yes. of level or ability. Yes. So I just had... So okay. everyone gets to... All right, so... We get back four more, which brings you to 17. This brings you to nine and brings you to three. Ah, okay. There it goes. Sorry. I just didn't have it coded right. That's way better. <laughs> <laughs> but now I got to bring you back. 17, nine, three. Okay. I am learning the coding. It just. A little slow on the uptake. <laughs> all, all of us went through the same the same process. Um, me in particular, you know, I'm I took me a while to learn a lot of it, and now that we're in Unity, all these map tools that I've got to learn and change in settings and whatnot. So yeah, everyone's um, been really patient. With I me. am hoping. I am hoping that that plus four is not hard coded as a plus four, um, because you're probably going to be wanting to eventually up your. Um, modifier and having to remember to go back and change it is going to be painful. No, I think it's because I changed the ability to wisdom. Okay. Uh, for his spell grouping. So. Which is what it should be. Okay. Yeah, it, no, nothing was set there at the moment. So. Ah, right. that would that that would cause problems if your ability score is not properly set for your group. Yep, you would miss out on a lot of bonuses. Yep. Good to know. All right, so everyone's got a bit of healing from that. Um, anyone else want to do any other prep spells or uh, rituals? I actually went down. I went from 14 to 9. <laughs> yeah, that's your wounds. That's not your hit points. Uh, yeah, I did that last time too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yes, your wounds it's went really down. really confusing to some people. It's really confusing to some people because the way they're used to counting is they every time they take damage, they subtract it from their hit point total. And so they, they keep track of their current hit points. Whereas other people have always just added it up. And when it meets or exceeds their total hit points, they, they've they reached zero hit points. So All right. it's just a matter of how you're used to thinking about your the, your damage taken versus your current hit points. Got it. Fantasy Grounds defaults to uh, damage taken. And then Varric has some temporary hit points, which I believe is from something that Miz cast last time around. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. So that's going to expire after the rest, correct? Correct. Yes. Yeah, I think it's expired Apparently by Hague now. Has some too. I don't know how long the spell lasts, but. But yeah, either, either way, after the long rest, it's gone. All right, so anything else before I trigger the long rest? 
Gone once. Not that I'm aware. Oh, I'm good. Going twice. One long rest. Be good. Okay. Now I have to look something up because it's not loaded. Spell slots back. It's not loaded. It's not loaded. Come on. Didn't you have a module that outlet outlined all your house rules. I was just going to look up about whether or not we do any healing at all on a long rest. We shouldn't, and I believe it's in there, but let's see. I'm not seeing it. Um, hold on. Let me see if I can figure out. Good Lord. Um... <laughs> You've got quite a mess of stuff in there, haven't you, right now? <laughs> oh, good gosh, yes. Because, as I recall, it was non-standard for the way Fantasy Grounds is programmed to deal with healing hit points overnight. So we had to adjust it manually every time we did a long rest. Good Lord. Yeah, that was the only thing I was wondering about before the long rest was whether or not I should roll some hit dice because we'll get at least get those back after the rest. So, well, and I have more yeah. healing spells. So, mm -hmm. if, mm -hmm. if anybody's yeah, right. down significantly, let me know and I'll take care of that. Looks like it did not port over, unfortunately. So, hold on. I have to reload the game for it. So, well, let me give this a try quick. Hold on a second. I'm not going to reload the game for it, but if I can just copy it over and enable it, I'll see. Um, let's see. That would have been where, 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 where. And also, I found when I was loading the game, um, I had to re-enable my modules, like the like player's handbook and stuff like that. So if there's stuff missing, okay. you may people may want to go in and double check that they've got that stuff enabled too. That they've got the modules loaded that they want loaded. Right. The exactly. other thing to the other thing to remember though is that you don't want a lot of things loaded if you can help it. Because yeah. while there is no longer the um uh the um software um uh, software memory availability limit, um it does clot uh bog down your um instance if you have lots of modules loaded it does bloat the memory usage oh, let's see And uh, yeah, it looks like I never copied it over. So I'm not going to move it. I'll copy. All right. So now that that's in there, let's see if I can. It may or may not recognize it without a reload. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for, but it will. I don't think so, though. Yeah, it populates that list on load, so I don't think we want to restart the game for it. But Alex, if you still have the um, uh, classic 
on your system or available, you should be able to load it from there to reference it. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking. Okay. Yeah, because it doesn't look like I can open it up either from here. But I can open it up from Classic. So hopefully next time we game, it will be there. <laughs> but yeah, that's a good question. I honestly should have that memorized, quite honestly, as the DM who authored it. Shame on you. Uh, story of my life. Uh. <laughs> All right, so back over here since that's not going to work. So should I zap Farrick with another healing spell or? Um, well, everyone, okay. There's one thing that you're not familiar with, with um, fifth edition. So that if you notice on your, um, your car the, the main tab of your character sheet. Right. And you notice at the very bottom, it says um, HD. And you'll see right. you have the number five on a die marker there. Yeah. Basically, you can roll your hit die that number of times before a long rest to restore your own health. Oh, nice. And then when you take a long rest, that hit die counter resets. In other words, it's a lot harder to die in 5th edition. <laughs> Got it. I was just noticing that he's like 29 of something or other. 22 uh, of 79, <laughs> so... Yeah, yep, yep. I'm okay. still pretty. Good. So, a long rest will naturally restore one hit point of damage per character level without expending uh, any uh, hit dice. Um, okay. Additionally, a character may make use of a healer's kit to attempt a medicine check on another character before a long rest. Um, you can't do it on yourself, um, and the use of the kit is consumed regardless of whether the ability check succeeds. On a successful DC 15 medicine check, the target's natural healing is doubled, so they regain two hit points per level instead of one. If the check beats a 20, it's instead tripled, so they gain three hit points per level instead of one. If the check beats a DC 30, um, they get four hit points per level instead of one. Hmm. And you can only attempt this once per character per 24 hours. Got any healers kit kits there, buddy? <laughs> I mean, I can throw a couple hit dice if you want to whack me with another spell. That that should, you know what I mean? I should be able to. And as for healers kits, I have um, I have uh, two healers kits for a total of twenty uses right now. I think my hit dice will do it. That was a solid roll. Yeah, I'm down the four wound. I'm good. The long rest will okay. hit me the rest of the way. And I'll get those two dice back. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. So you already gave us the, um, right. the long rest. <laughs> I'm not too worried about it. I think it'll be okay. <laughs> right up. So, yeah, four hit, four um, damage. That's fine. <laughs> you do have to, you do have to um, manually uh, change your um, wounds total to account for the um, natural healing because Fantasy Grounds does, does not, not do that automatically. It is not programmed to do that. Okay, cool, done. All right, so Albie, do you wanna sure. use one of your hit dice? Sure. So go ahead and just double click on that, that little hit dice, Monica. Oh, solid. <laughs> yeah. yeah we're all good so that helps you and then i will trigger another long rest for you so that you're back up to max and then the only one that was left would have been uh, kaylee will you to carry yours also yes 
low natural healing takes care of that. I get the, um, I get five hit points for a long rest. Yep. So I was everyone, only down three. Everyone's fully healed. Nice. So yeah, as I said, it's a lot harder to die in fifth edition. <laughs> All right. Even on the slow natural healing variant, it's still a lot harder to die in the edition. Yep. Um, so, but just prior to the end of your rest, you know, when you guys decide that it's time to start getting moving again, maybe about an hour or so beforehand. Um, do, 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 do. Timestamp. Uh, a lot of dice. Kaylee. He's rolling a check for everybody all at once. Yep. He's very cool. It is very handy. So, Kaylee, <laughs> Beckish, Redra, Varric, hey, all of you except for Miz, <laughs> hear a sound coming from the room from which the wraiths emerged or from that hallway. <clears throat> it sounds. Oh, so like down that away. It sounds like, to some of you, though others, you are much more sure, it is the sound of a door creaking open. Should I go check it out? Uh oh. Yes, yes, we shall. Yes. <laughs> All right. And the the dome is only good for eight hours. So, if we have passed eight hours of time, no, it, then the it, dome it, the dome is still up at the moment. Okay. All right. So I, um, I can't, unless I'm, unless we want me to drop the dome, I can't go anywhere. So I'll hang here. Okay. Oh yeah. Dome! Keith, can you drop the timestamp in the um, chat box? Thank you. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to walk down there, like tossing the ball at the end of the flail in my left hand. <laughs> Give me a moment. I'm trying to figure out where the right keys are. Hold on. There we go. That's what I was looking for. The mask mode. Okay, so oh gosh, I still gotta get used to all of this. No, nope, not that, not that. There we go. A lot more options in the DM map mode now for sure. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so beyond the doorway, which has now pretty much been smashed. Um, you see an octagonal room, which um, Albi or uh, Fekesh had been in previously, but he didn't really have much time to appreciate it. Other than the fact that, yes, indeed, there are one door in each of the cardinal compass points. Which hopefully you can kind of make out on there. They don't stand out very well on the map, unfortunately. Um, there is also something shiny on the floor Ooh, shiny mm -hmm. shiny glowing and humming yeah. 
All right. And coming <laughs> towards us? No. It's a sword. Oh. Oh, humming. I thought you said coming. No, hum humming. Hmm. No, humming. Ah, uh, interesting. And uh, Feckish, I want you to roll an insight check. And how would I go about doing that? On your character sheet. All right. Go to your skills tab. Uh, uh, skills. And you and... see over under the total column, there's a little tiny die marker. Yeah. Either double click it or drag it to the um, to the. Actually, that should be done. You want it in the tower? tower? Yeah, you should drag just drag that to the die tower. So insight. Okay, and as you see and notice the sword again, Feckish, you do seem to recall that when you first walked in there, um, the, the wraiths were very fixated on it. They were hovering around it, paying attention to it, but obviously not touching it. That's probably why they didn't see me initially, though. Huh? Oh, well, they noticed you as soon as you walked in, but when you walked in, that's what they had their attention. Got it. So your insight check basically said, oh yeah, the, the rates were interested in that thing too. I wonder why. Wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Go forth and wizard something. Yeah, I'll uh, step up to the doorway and just take a peek around, get a better look at the room. And as you walk up to that point, you notice, gotta be in the right mode. Um, you notice the door to the north is swinging open. And opening the door appears to be a group of humans. In the room? Coming into the room, opening the door. Oh. The dome okay. is still up for one more hour, so we can use it as a refuge if we need to. Um, or I can drop it and come and join you guys. I can just well, once you leave, doesn't it dissipate? If I leave, yeah, if I move out of the dome, it goes away. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if we have the fireball quite yet. We can try diplomacy. <laughs> and we are we're looking for some people, so this could be... And as I hear him say that, I whip my head to him, like, surprised he even said that. <laughs> I said it begrudgingly. <laughs> it kind of you, you try you, diplomacy yeah 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 <laughs> you can hear Varg's loathing of the idea but he's like i'll try <laughs> so yeah he'll just call out to the people as they enter the room friend or foe ho there that is what i was thinking <laughs> Oh, there. <laughs> we mean you no harm. What did you call me? There's two of them apparently there, and they put up their hands. Like, we mean you no harm. We're just looking for a way out. Are they with, do they look like the people that we saw, like the, oh, what the hell are they called? The Magis. Yes, they look like the indigents. Okay. Um. You they look like DJs. Screen share. <laughs> so yeah, we'll, we'll I'll tell them that we've yeah, we've met the people at the entryway and have been looking for them. So if anybody wants to help them get out of here or something, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> Do you know the way out of the pyramid? We have been searching for many weeks now. Our group has been split up and we're, we're, we're lost. We, we, we need to find the way out and get back to our families. Ask if they're in need of any assistance in healing. No, fortunately, we, we had a bad encounter a few days ago, but uh, have since been able to recover. But it's very dangerous around here. <laughs> True that. So which door did they come into the room? When? They came in through the north door. To the north door. 
So we pretty much know what's behind us collectively, correct? Yeah, but it'd be hard to explain how to get there. Right. Yeah, but I'm not saying should we move easy. is forward through one of the doors in this octagonal room. I think the wizard was interested in something in one of those other three rooms we were near. Okay. I'm just well, a we reminder, can... the wizard and the dragonborn do not know a way out. The rest of you do. Correct. Oh, oh that's right. Oh. That's, that's really what I was thinking. when. way out, but it is a way out. <laughs> it, it, true. Very, very true. Yeah, they can, I mean, if they want to tag along with us, stay close for now until we get to a point where we could direct them. Because from this position, I don't think directing them towards the possible exit we know about is, I don't know if that'll work out for them very well. I mean, I think that Redrith and Kaylee have done a great job with the map, so maybe they we, can. We've got We've got maps. We can, and I've got spare supplies. I can sketch them a copy real quick. And we did make chalk marks all over the place. Yeah, yeah. We weren't just labeling them on the map. We were literally making chalk marks on the walls. Problem yeah, is, so they I, have to. They have to go to the Sphinx, and don't they have to take the Sphinx's uh, quiz? To get out I don't of there, think you or... have to. Oh, there was an option to, to answer the riddle. That's right. Yeah, it wasn't even offended that we popped up <clears throat> in this poop hole. Like that's right. <laughs> I mean, but that's that is the way out that we know. It is not particularly safe um, because yep, that right. water is rushing really fast, yeah, and yeah, you yeah. may or may not survive the uh, the trip down the water slide. But it is a way out. <laughs> Well, then it's, how do and they get they, out of the water? And then they, right, then they have Dang. to get out of the water silo. Hold on a second. Is this conversation being held between the players or between the characters? Players. Okay. <laughs> Just want to make sure whether or not the dervishes should be responding to what they hear. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could say we could do it as characters, too. It doesn't matter because they still can't figure out how to get to the Sphinx, so... Yeah, right. Without our help, they're stuck here either way. Yeah. <laughs> ah, but believe it or not, you guys are also indicating other clues, which to those who are coming from a different perspective might find informative. Oh, um, oh right. Yeah, the, these people wouldn't know about the Sphinx or any of that. Like they don't, we know more about this place than the people studying it. And trying to protect it sure. <laughs> that's crazy in some res <laughs> in some respects that's true right yes yes primarily not because you've been more trained on it but because you've been more methodical about your explorations mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know that sphinx, that sphinx still owes us the answer to a question that's right yeah yep Might have been good that you guys kept that on reserve too. I'm hoping. Yeah. I'm hoping that I'm hoping that our explorations will um, lead us to um, the one the one most important question that we need to ask the Sphinx, and a wording that will give us an answer that that helps us. Right. That you can actually use. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because the, the, the wording of the question will determine, will uh, influence how useful the answer is. How do I get the gem? You yeah. pick it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do they know anything about the sword in the room? Like, are they aware of anything that we're looking at in well, this room? As they come into the room, it's kind of hard not to notice it. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually should point out and... Uh, all right, you wouldn't know this, but um, Al uh, Fekish would. Um, and because of his insight check, he's going to actually connect the dots here. Um, it is not glowing and humming anymore, but it was when it was surrounded by the wraiths. Mm. And Fekish does recall that, hmm, it was 
acting it was a lot more active when the wraiths were looking at it sting yeah <laughs> yeah but keep in mind only feckish is aware of this at the moment so otherwise to the rest of you it's just a a, a plain it's a long sword it looks like it's in good good shape but you know, it, there's nothing really catching your attention about it, but um, Fekish is noticing that. Wait a minute, that was behaving differently before. Do you want me to touch it? Hmm? No. The only <laughs> thing that dude said was no touchy. No touchy, touchy. Well, I, I, we I'm being beckoned, so we're going to take things. an early break. You guys go ahead and discuss what you want to do next. I should be back within five minutes. Right hey guys, do we still need the dome? We're good. <laughs> yeah, come this way, wizard. <laughs> what the? And the, my ceiling was about to fall in. What the crud was that? Um, my computer just did something funky. I still feel like we should be talking like rock, Dan. I'll have to practice. <laughs> right. He is telling us that there is many things here. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I get weird vibes from sword. Yes. He is giving me a very strange feeling, this sword. Because he, he gives that gender to like the male dominated things Ta and like kind of like French. third person. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Right. I have a problem. What happened? I have a technical problem. My so you're computer... saying it, you're saying it's a normal gaming Saturday then? <laughs> <laughs> no, worse. My computer still thinks it is on. It still has the lights and stuff, and my phone thinks that my computer is still connected to its internet. But my computer. One screen is black, the other screen is blue, and I try to click and it just chimes. Like it's not working. It shows you're still connected to the game, so that's kind of weird. Yeah. But it's not responding. It's. I really hate to have to just load up my tablet. But I might have to, where is my tablet anyway? Because if my laptop is not behaving, then I switch right, to I'll my be back tablet. in a few minutes. Uh, of course, I won't be able to log into Fantasy Grounds until Keith kicks me because otherwise it'll give me a license key error. License key mismatch error. Are they... They're, they're separate monitors, correct? I have two monitors. One is black and one is blue right now. Check the monitor connections. Well, I can check the one monitor connection because that's an external monitor, but it's a laptop. So ah, I can't okay. check the connection for the Well, for that, the other that's monitor. what I was... That's why I was asking you if it's it may be a connectivity issue because okay. you're still physically connected as far as internet and in game. So it may just be a monitor connectivity issue. But the laptop, yeah, that's something else. Yeah, if it was just the if it was just my external monitor that was um, misbehaving, then yeah, it'd be a um, Are they running as dual monitors off the same rig, like monitor one and two for a display? Or are they actually yeah. running separate? Okay. 
Which one's your primary? The laptop or the external? The laptop. And you have no you have no connectivity through both of them, correct? The laptop's built-in screen is black as if it were off. Wow. And the okay. other the other monitor is showing a blue background. Um, when I click with the cursor on the um, external monitor, it just chimes like it, it gives it's one of those. Up on uh, yeah, but I click when the cursor should be on the on the other monitor, the built-in monitor, and nothing happened. What were you doing when they went pooched? I was trying to type, I was trying to do notes or something in fantasy grounds. Yeah, because by the sounds of what you're saying, it sounds like it got hung up on a refresh, like it's stuck doing something that's affecting both monitors, which doesn't make any sense, but that's the joys of modern technology. Yeah, it doesn't always make sense. What I'm doing, trying to do right now is get my tablet connected to my internet. My tablet is Is it running so slow? What is its problem? I hate tech gremlins. Uh, yeah. I really don't want to just crash my laptop, but I might have to. If I can't get my tablet to cooperate either. Still having tech issues, huh? Yeah, I have an unresponsive laptop that's is acting like it's still on except that I can't do anything with it and it doesn't show me a proper screen and um, my tablet is having trouble responding as well every click I make is taking forever to have any sort of response so I can't even so I'm having difficulty figuring out if it's connected to my internet or not My phone says it's not connected. I'll be right back. No problem. That way, you stupid machine. Um, so you have the two der dervishes um, standing in front of you. 
And they take notice of the sword on the ground as well. And one of them looks up at you and says, is that weapon yours? No, but I wouldn't touch it. And then I'm going to ask him if they've taken any of the riches they found while they've been traveling. You know, no, we are defenders of the pyramid. We know not to take any such treasures. That's right. I was just making sure. That was a test. <laughs> but no, this is not our sword. Do you know anything about it? No, 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 no. I was just wondering whether or not it belonged here. Presumably it does. Mm -hmm. How can they Anybody be defenders want? of the pyramid and not know the way out or the fact that the sword just belongs here? Because they've never been here. When we met the, the people we met at the entry, the dervishes we met coming into the temple didn't had never found the door we found to get through here. Mm -hmm. ah. Now, this might be a good time for one or more of you to relay what you do know or what you feel is worth sharing. Um, that you were told just prior to entering the pyramid. Do any of our lore keepers remember enough of that? Yep, I would look at the wizard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm so glad I'm a cat. Meow. <laughs> Alex, you okay. want to fill him in? All her notes are digitally. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, she probably can't right even now. look them up at the moment. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, so I'm looking hitters. up the login info for this table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just got to type in um, uh, my, my name if you're trying to connect. Hello here. Okay. No system did reset if it doesn't remember which session it was connected to. Oh so, no, this is my tablet. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we're. Um, can you boot me? I can do so. I, I don't like to, but I can. Okay. Okay, you've been kicked. Okay. Now maybe it will connect me. So, are you talking about the inscriptions? Or are you talking about the? The conversation with the ghost in the desert? Or... Yeah, the latter. Yeah, why we're here. Yep. Yeah, we told the other dervishes about it, so I wouldn't see why these guys would be any different. And yeah, as far as the inscriptions go, um, I would point out to Fekish that in your wandering through the temple, particularly the lower levels, you did notice a lot of inscriptions on the walls and stuff in a language that you did not recognize, but you did not spend any time really paying attention to them. But um, if they mention the word inscriptions, you'll go, oh, those. Oh, those. <laughs> Can I, like, not touch the sword, but go take a look at it? Like, check it out? See if it, like, is it, more than it stacked? Owner. More than likely, but the key question I have to ask is what light source are you currently using? Um, I forgot about that. <laughs> is, is, is there any light here? There's no natural light here? Uh, not beyond what the uh, the two torches that are being carried by the two dervishes. By the dervishes, yeah. Mm. I, can, um, I can cast dancing lights. That would be... Much appreciated. So uh, Redrith has left his um, his nook and the uh, the hut is the down, dome is right? gone. Yep. Okay. All right. So with that, I guess you actually get an appropriate description. Not that there's much here. So in the center of this octagonal room, which is thirty feet across are or were two robed figures. There's a wooden plank door in the center of the north, south, east, and west walls. On the floor, you see a sword. It is a long sword. Um, 
Hmm. Is it just laying on the floor or is it sticking into the floor like sword in the stone kind of thing? Uh, no, they came they've come across one of those already. This one is just lying on the floor. Got it. Mm. And though it looks well made, there do not appear to be any identifying marks um, from your perspective. So it doesn't look like it has any like the rune similar writing on it than like the walls or anything. No. Nope. Well, I do make the comment to Eric that when I was in the room earlier with the wraiths that the sword was glowing and humming, hmm. which is no longer doing now. Interesting. I want to pick it up, guys. <laughs> well, and and what's considered Make sure plunder? You put it back. If Matt, but Matt, if this was, was dropped, yeah. What's that? Yeah, that was Matt. Was Matt yeah. Because mm -hmm. um, because what's considered plunder? If it's something that someone brought in, correct. Then that's that, that's not a part of the tomb. You know what I mean? Yeah, and does it only become plunder once it leaves the tomb? Mm. That's true. I mean, yeah, I'm sure there's certain things that if we move them from where they were, we would. But yeah, I think it's like some of the treasure, as long as we, it doesn't leave the tomb, it's has it been plundered? Well, if we don't have a question, <laughs> I guess if we don't have a question for the Sphinx, we'll have one now. Yeah, right. <laughs> there you go. Can we take this with us. Can I keep this? Oh, that's a that cool? that's a good idea. <laughs> Uh, Alex is making a point that I have no idea because I wasn't present present to it. But that's true. There's the ring, and then there was that other sword that was sticking out of that one person that I grabbed. And right. Passed yeah. Off to we somebody else. Pick some stuff. Do you want me to detect magic, or would you like to, Redrith? I can do it. Cool. <laughs> that is not a problem. Let me. Or shit, even identify it, fuck. Because <laughs> if it doesn't have to do with Amon Ray, I say we take it. I don't know if yeah. we could figure that out with the tech magic, but no, not with the tech magic. You need an identify for that. Identify. I do have that. Oh, right, yeah, ritual, that's what so. I meant. Yeah. Do you yeah. have the Do you have the expensive material component for it though? Uh, let's see. So Matt, go ahead and grab the uh, the long sword that's listed in the party inventory. Listed in the what? The party inventory sheet. If you look on the uh, the shared Zoom screen. All right, party. Oh, that that party sheet. I see. The one that says long sword. Yep. When's the party inventory? The sword next to the party sheet? The party sheet you get by hitting this button up in the top right corner. Okay. And then you hit the Oh, I see, I see. Tab. Inventory. Yep. yep. Okay. And then you drag that over to your inventory. Well, I don't know if I've picked it up quite yet. So, yeah. Okay. Ready well, to when you're ready, up. that's, uh, that, that's yep. how you claim it. Cool. But yeah, I'd really like to, once we've identified it, I will totally, I'm totally willing to pick it up and accept any curses bestowed upon me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so um, it looks like we might have a sword that we picked up on the lower level earlier. Um, mm -hmm. And I want to say that we have, that we picked up a ring as well. But I don't remember when when we picked them up or who has the ring. You know, ironically enough, I have one of the components, but I don't have the other for identify. Damn. <laughs> Should I just pick it up? All then? you need, all you need is the expensive hundred gold piece pearl and your arcane focus. Oh, I thought it says I need an owl feather also. Your arcane focus feather. will substitute for that. Oh, okay. She, she is correct. 
No, According to five E rules. The whole purpose of an arcane focus. Hi, gorgeous. <laughs> so that you don't have to micromanage your component pouch inventory. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, if you're. In the back so, Andrew, does that mean you are casting identify on the I item? wanted to watch it. Yeah. I'm here. You're pretty. Okay. Right, so that's kind of nice. Oh, my mic's on. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you're good, dude. Kids are important too. Oh yes, yes they are. <laughs> was that was that Jen that just had to go check his lights? Nope. Okay, so are you casting identify as a ritual? Ritual, yes. Yeah, so that'll take ten minutes. Yep. Doesn't really have a. I button. can go to the rest when I try to yeah, fell off. I'll come back and burn one with you, and then I'll go. What? I can go to Walmart. Yeah. Identify, identify. Sorry, I pulled it in. Just one <laughs> object that you must touch throughout the casting of the spell. There's a magic item or some other magic imbued object. You learn its properties and how to use them, whether it requires attunement to use, and how many charges it has, if any. And you learn whether any spells are affecting the item and what they are. If the item was created by a spell, you learn which spell created it. And instead, touch a creature throughout the casting, you learn what spells, if any, are currently affecting it. Okay, so you spend 10 minutes fondling the sword while you're casting your ritual. Your pearl is consumed, and you learn that, or discover, actually, hmm, I'm debating whether or not I should have you roll, yeah, go ahead and make an insight check in the tower. And just so we know, that was the only pearl I had, so, so <laughs> we identified it this one thing. It is not consumed. It is uh, not consumed sure? unless it specifies, and I don't think it specifies. Insight. So you said insight? Yes. You are correct, Alex. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Use, use a tough check and balance, I swear. <laughs> it's a $100 gold piece, man, or a $100 pearl. Yep, so. it ain't cheap. Yeah. All right, so um, the first thing that um, comes to your attention is that uh, this, or as you're casting the spell, the first thing that you become aware of is that this apparently was a sword that was last born by a paladin. <laughs> it was his favorite weapon and apparently had been used quite prolifically in his crusade against the undead. And in fact, this sword actually has a history to it and is known as Bar Ethel. That's awesome. And is known for its particular potency against the undead. And has a particularly inquisitive feature to it, which causes you to raise an eyebrow. It does not require attunement. Can I have it? Can I take it? <laughs> so me. <laughs> That's awesome. Hell so yeah. does that are mean gonna, it's, it's not your... part of the treasure of the tomb, right? It's it's uh well we don't know that. I guess Actually we'll he kinda does because since it has a history. He knows mm. that there is there are stories of this um, sword having been used in important events since the pharaoh has passed. So it could not have been part of his original treasure. Nice. Okay. It had already been removed. Nice. Oh. 
Fuck yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, and then just Red drag Red and drop Red the does, Red Red is point. fine with him. That does bring up a good point. He could have been bringing it back here. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, okay. Well, <laughs> could have. It's on my back. <laughs> I think you got to drag it to your inventory. Oh, into the I uh, I dragged it into the just onto the. All right. Oh. You, you drag it out yeah. of the party sheet onto grab your inventory. The, grab the, the eye icon. Grab the eye icon. Oh, the eye? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Play. There you go. There you go. Now you got it. Now, now it says in the chat window that you grabbed it. Oh, right. So all, okay. So we all know who to blame who brings the curse down on us later. So Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Entirely true. We do have we do have a, a jeweled ring and um, another sword. That red dress took, but shirt. he's still going to blame Varric. <laughs> <laughs> Varric will not forget this. Actually, <laughs> red dress. Understanding who you're going to blame, you still need to grab that um, that uh, shiny long sword and put it in your inventory. Oh, right. Which is not identical. Hey, yeah, Kaelaway is going to casually suggest that, well, while we're at it, why don't we just identify the other items that we took? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, shiny longsword. I think it was Ooh, the longsword, shiny. and then there was, a, there was a ring. There was a ring of some kind too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. It it didn't. See, I got nothing. See that? I got nothing. What do you mean you got nothing? Look at the chat window. Party oh, to red dress. Interesting. Nothing. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone from the party sheet. It's not in my inventory. I don't think. Because above that it says party to Varric. Yeah. Right. So somebody grabbed yeah, but it. It said what item he took. Yeah. It completely disappeared. It's gone. You threw it it yeah, into, that's weird. It went into the ether. I don't see it anymore. Uh, hold on a second. I have the sun blade, so and that's a pretty good sword. So unless this one's better than that, I, I am somebody else. If they need a sword, could potentially make use of it. Yeah, use it. I don't. Well, it depends. It it <laughs> depends. It depends on what it does. That's oh true. wait, hey. My laptop might be starting to cooperate. Or maybe not. All right. Anyway. Try it again. I'll deal with that later. Jim, try dragging it again. Make sure it drops into your inventory sheet, though. Okay. There we go. Now it says yep. you got it. Now it's there. It shows up third from the bottom in my inventory. Yeah, I think somehow you accidentally dropped it into the ether, and so it just disposed of it. <laughs> it's not Very supposed good. to do that, though. Isn't that how you delete an item you guys don't want to carry? No. <laughs> right so click I can... and choose the trash can. So I can spend the 10 minutes to identify this one, too, now that we're at a little break point right here mm-hmm. settle on and the floor the, um, with the sword laying across my lap my hands resting on it as and the pearl held in my right hand as i uh go through the the spell forms to identify it and my focus in the other hand All right, so it is in your inventory now, right? Correct. If I spend the attunement time, would I be able to like get like the sword card? Like how could I learn more about the sword? Beyond what the identify spell um 
uh, states, you'd probably have to go research it. Okay. 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 Where the heck did that thing go? There it is. Shoot, 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 shoot. Where is it? No, 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 no. Sorry about this, guys. Give me a second. There's that. Okay. Um... There we go. Can you see it now? Jim? Sorry, I had my volume down. Uh, oh. It. What it says is the name has changed to Enduval, and now it says notes Enduval is inscribed on its blade by the hilt, and that's it. Okay, you don't see the, the bonus on it? Ironically, it says 1d8 minus one is the damage. <laughs> what? <laughs> 1d8 minus one? <laughs> In under weapons on my, let me see if, is it equipped? Yeah, if I have it equipped, it says it is in the properties. Um, if I click the magnifying glass, its name is shiny longsword. And then under properties, it says versatile 1d10 and then magic. And But then down below, it says dice. I'm not sure what kind of dice that is. Um, and then it's times base. And that seems really weird because it should say it's a plus two. That's what I'm seeing on my screen. Maybe it okay. might be. Well, I just have to log out, log back in, or something. No, oh, it's plus. Um, it's plus two for attack. But I'm saying the damage is one d eight minus one. Oh, the minus one is long sword does a d. The long sword does a d eight, and your strength mod is a minus one. Ah, there we go. Yep. Yep, that's right. <laughs> so yeah, it, so, it yeah. A plus two longsword. Very nice, a plus two to attack. Okay, and that's I'm cool. not. Uh, am I proficient with them? I don't think I am. Um, you're a you're a high elf. You are proficient with longswords. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if it's not showing the magic bonus of plus two, which applies to both attacks and damage then um it might not be marked as identified 
here's what it yeah that's true it's not marked as identified under my weapons because here i'll put in the discord what what it shows up on my under campaign play i will put in there You're right this back is how it Robin. shows this is how it shows for me What do you say? I have two light hammers? I never noticed that before. <laughs> Probably part of your starting equipment packages. Yeah, with magic. 1d4 plus magic? 5 bludgeoning magic. Yeah. Magic hammers? Oh. Refined light hammer. Yeah. Light thrown range 2060 magic. Son of a bitch. We must have picked that up somewhere. But I got two. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if that's an error, but it looks like I have two. Like I could carry them in both hands. We may not be able to since hmm. we don't talk about it when I'm done. All right. And all right. So you've now identified both swords. Um, did we? Oh, I'm sorry. One last identified... thing. Redreth, go ahead and do an insight, insight check on the uh, second sword in the tower. Oh, okay, in the tower. I'll do that. Ah, oh, damn it. Redruth, your identify skill also tells you that it is a cursed sword. <laughs> the shiny sword is? Yes. The, the one and, that and I picked up. And Duval? Mm -hmm. I, will, I will drop it like a hot, hot pocket I just pulled out of the microwave. <laughs> I mean, hey, two dervishes look at you as like, is is there something wrong with it? Say, well, this one is cursed. I'm, do I did I know the nature of the curse or? It's a berserking sword. Hmm. What would that mean for? Would that like turn? If you had wielded it in battle, it would have forced you to attack anything and everything until either you or everything else was dead. <laughs> yeah, didn't. Yeah, that's um, that can be bad news. Yeah, because if we try running and somebody has that, they're not going to run. <laughs> well, but if they'll I'm attack us too if they're attacking anything and everything. Oh right, yeah. Oh, so that shit. also means you'll kill your own party members too. Right. Yes. What could go wrong? I mean, we do have a cleric with us now. Maybe at some point he can get some greater restoration or some lesser restoration and somebody could attune to it. I don't know. That's, yeah, that rage, though, is not a controllable rage, so. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Ooh, ooh. Omelets, uh -huh. breaking eggs. It's all fine. Guess what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> My precious. You can't get rid of it. It won't let it throw it down. So it I throw you. it down and it comes back to me? No, you just, you, you can't. You, 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 you don't want to get rid of it. You have to keep it. It speaks to you. Uh, yeah. I'm sticking to you. My precious. Wait. Just like it is glue. Just by you are not being forced to wield it, but it will not let you discard it. Just by picking it up, Only you are cursed. Only blank will allow the PC who picks up Endeval to rid himself of this device. <laughs> wow. Oh, <shit. laughs> oh, that's kind of great. <laughs> so, 
So essentially, it's like a boomerang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a boomerang that's glued to your hand, and every time you try to throw it, it just stays there. <laughs> I throw it, and it comes back to me. <laughs> no, it's just a case of your understanding. You you can't physically drop it. Let go of it. It, it right. impulsively will not let you like relieve yourself of it. That doesn't mean you have to hold it and wield it, but you will not willingly give it away. You will not willingly leave it behind. Mm. You will not willingly drop it. No shit. Yeah, so you couldn't even give it to one of us. Yeah, that sucks. Ha! Cleric, you got anything that can uh, break a curse by chance? Oh, is he gone? What was the question? No, oh, sorry, I was reading what Cal, yeah, was You're reading good. what uh, Cal Lily was saying. No, I don't have anything in remove curse that I'm aware of. I'd have to look. Okay. Let's see here. That requires a greater restoration or a remove curse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I don't think we're leveled enough yet for either one of those. Are you greater parent? restoration is a level five spell? Oh. Yeah, but I don't know if. I've only got access to level three spells. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, you might be a little bit level more. three. Oh. Until tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> not today. I, I do not have that spell. So I will realize that I will settle down with my back against the wall and pull out my bottle of whiskey and take a big drink. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right, let me see if I can track that part down. Um, and internally and I'll, and I'll say, <laughs> And I'll say, all I have to say is, if you guys make me mad, I'm equipping the sword. <laughs> I'll finish the attunement. Fuck around. <laughs> I don't think I have to be attuned to that one. Oh, really? Not for the curse to take effect. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> um, so, has anyone who knows what I'm talking about read my message it, so that yes, we can I, answer my it. question? Yes, I've read it. <laughs> I think somebody has the ring. I just don't know who. And that would be a good time to. I'm trying to write because you, you found multiple ones. I'm trying to make sure I'm looking at the right one. So let's see. Uh, I right. thought uh, one of the Goliaths uh, picked it up okay, back so when. It's not that one. That's a different yeah. one. I have a ring of protection, but I thought I had it since we started playing. Because that's something I would usually pick up to raise my AC. Yeah. I'm scouring my notes. Okay. We might have left that Hold ring on. that I that I quoted about alone. I thought that we had decided to since, yeah, like you said, we, most of the treasures are no touchy treasures. Notes on my laptop for that session. Yes, okay. Um, Kayla Lee, you have that ring. I have that ring? It's in your inventory. Oh. Make it be cursed. Well, Make it be cursed. Make it be cursed. <laughs> I don't, I don't have that ring. <laughs> well, I will offer it up for identification. Or will you? <laughs> actually it was identified Thing of swimming. oh it was yep hold on okay because it's not listed as identified in my inventory so no it is not um hold on
did not realize that I had stuck it in my inventory. Probably dropped it in a pocket without thinking about it. Would be nice to see you stroking your pocket going, my precious. <laughs> Where is your character? There it is. Hiding, apparently. The main question I have is does this sword allow my eyes to glow red? Because that would make it awesome. That would be. <laughs> Get your storm form on. You can, <laughs> yeah, there you go. A, you grip onto your sword and you go, what did you say to me? <laughs> what did you say oh. about elves? <laughs> and if the, if the spell doesn't work, then fireball it is. That's right. Well, it says once you start beginning swinging, you start attacking. They didn't say attack with what. That's true. So who knows? I might switch exactly right to a fireball. That's right. Of the yeah, but if it you causes you to rage, you can't cast spells. I don't, does it say if it makes you rage or if it's just like a berserker thing? I said it's berserker sword. See, it's How funny. All, all I see is shiny long sword. That's all I see. <laughs> I still don't I get can that. I wonder if I've got curse like... on it. But so, no, but there's two different swords. End of all was the one that was sticking up way back in the other place. The shiny the long sword one. is something. Yeah, the shiny long sword is a different one. Well, hey, either way, I can, do I can do remove curse on the sword. You can? Yeah. So third oh, level cleric. Go. Yeah, uh, you might have to wait till tomorrow, though, um, till after your next long rest so that you can um, prepare it. Well, I've got two third level spells that I have access to, and the only one I've cast so far was the mass healing. Which yeah, that was yeah before, I think that was and that was I don't before you rest, so you should have gotten the back. Yeah, mm -hmm. does it? Yeah, does a, I know I have wizard has to prepare. Does a cleric have to prepare pair spells? I didn't think no. they yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, they do. Okay. 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 Not prepare, yeah, but you choose. Can, them. Yeah, you can choose a new list of spells every day. Oh, okay, as a cleric. Okay. Well, I have, I have my I have my list of spells as a wizard, but I can only prepare a certain number of them. Right. And, Right, and I can't change. I can't change up the number of the type of spells I know. I have to choose them when I level. Uh, oh, I know how to remove curse. So awesome. I can take care of your sword later. Sweet. Yeah, the druid, uh, same cleric. Like you re choose uh, your spells at the beginning of the day, but uh, or long rest, whichever. But uh, I always find it more fun to just stick with the spells you got because it makes it a challenge. <laughs> but that's just me. So, yeah, you removed the curse. Are you going to give anybody the sword, Redra? Maybe somebody with a high wisdom? <laughs> So, how, well, with a high well, right now, I, I mean, I don't even know anything else about the sword other than yeah, that's it's right. stuck to me. Because mm -hmm. for me, for whatever reason, it still just shows as shiny. So. Do you, by any chance? Uh, never mind. That's a meta question. Never mind. Alex, <laughs> are you are you seeing the updated uh, item in your character sheet? Yeah. Well, on the plus side, at least we learn a valuable lesson. We shouldn't go uh, touching other people's swords. You might catch something. Oh, I'm not <laughs> going to add to that as much as I'm no, touchy, touchy. 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 <laughs> no touchy. I don't recall having identified that, but um, if you say we did, then we probably did. Well, if not, then you just identified it now, then. Anything else about it that he learns? You need me to do another insight roll? Yep. Okay. Because either we're doing this now or we did this a while ago and we're just now making notes about it. So it says the lore keeper. 
No, he does not uh, detect anything uh, exceptional about it beyond what uh, what it is. Okay. Um, For what it is, it's a run of the mill. What it is. Okay. No, no insights about whether or not it's safe to take with us. No. Um, the item entry does not specify whether or not it requires attunement. If it doesn't specify it, it does not require it. Excellent. Not that I'm currently intending to use it, but it's always nice to know. I mean, your head could use it. <laughs> Depending on what it is, I mean. So while the, I guess the three of you are engaged in identifying and relaying magic items, um, the remaining, the remainder of you, um, you know, kind of just taking it easy, you still, you know, planned on resting for another hour or so. Um, you know. Ms. or Haley or Fekish, is there any reason why you are staying in the the uh, passageway at this point, or shall we presume you guys have all congregated inside the room? To... We all kind of, I think we all kind of moved into the room. Yeah. Um, we didn't bother to move our tokens on the map. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I want. just want to figure out where everyone actually is at the moment. So go ahead and place yourselves where you would be. Um, I'm just gonna check out my new sword and feel like I want to kill something undead. Yeah, everybody's handling new stuff. I'm just kind of kicking at the dirt on the floor and stuff. <laughs> feeling all out. Give him the shiny sword. Red. I I'll offer him the sh the sword. <laughs> I think Fekish is supposed to have that one first, isn't he? What? He he's got to break the curse on it. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Once you <laughs> once you attune to it, he'll have to break the curse so you can use it without freaking out because <laughs> because honestly with my strength being as low as it is it makes no sense for me to actually have it anyways mm -hmm. i still have a bad feeling about all of this stuff so <laughs> <laughs> no touchy <laughs> listen listen if we save the desert and return amon ray's tomb to the way it's supposed to be we should be I mean, he should be giving us some kind of boon, and I think a cool sword, a few of them would be cool. <laughs> well, he did some crappy stuff to his own people, so there's that too. Hey, one hand washes the other. They did hey, but people have to be dead for a thousand years, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> his people robbed his tomb, and he told them not to. That's, you know. It's like sitting back and letting your kids stick their finger in the light socket. I told you not to. See? <laughs> I didn't believe you. Yeah. I'm standing back and all Maddie's got running in his head is Notorious B.I.G. Give me the loot! Give me the loot! I'm a bad, bad boy. Hey, I was the first one to be like, hey, we shouldn't, we shouldn't take anything. But now I'm looking at the sword and I'm like, that was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it looks shiny. <laughs> so you, you'd, be the, you'd be the last one to leave the tomb when we leave. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Stand at the threshold for a second, stick the sword out, see if anything happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if these Darvishes want to like stick with us after we leave this room, I'm fine with that. Yeah, they don't seem to be heading anywhere at the moment, though. You, the others do notice that they seem to be a bit um, twitchy. They keep seeming to look behind them and, you know, at casual sounds of the dungeon, like, you know, a little rock falling here and there and, you know, the sound of water dripping, um, which you have actually gotten quite used to. You're aware that there's water running throughout this pyramid in different places. Um, it, it does strike you that all these dervishes seem to be very, very unfamiliar with the innards of this of of the of the pyramid at all. Yeah. Um, 
that being said, um, who was it again? I believe Kaeli and Fekish. Notice that for a tomb, things seem to be unusually well kept here. Very little debris. There's almost no dust. Um, the torch sconces that you've come across so far, though not lit, you can tell have recently been used. Recently, as in, you know, within a matter of weeks or months, not necessarily within a few hours. But um, mm -hmm. you know, considering how far that you've come, um, come into this pyramid so far and that it's supposedly unbreachable, no one's gotten in, no one has stolen his treasure, it, it's beginning to plague upon you. It's like, why is there so much activity going on in this place? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, Jim. Screen share. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Yeah, that is strange. And they're they're do they look nervous? You said the dervishes kind of nervous, nervous, but twitchy. You know, they're uh, okay, they're okay. jumpy. You know, at, right. at any little thing. You know, even amongst you guys. You know, if you like reach into your pockets or something, they're like, oh, okay, <laughs> okay. And I'll just ask him if anything was following them recently before they came here. Has anything been following them or? No, they apparently were just wandering through the um, through the tunnels. Also, they had been sent. To, um, they explained to you that they had been sent up here by their leader, um, or out from them. Um, they had managed to. F the rest of their companions were stuck in the maze, and their head sent them uh, sent them out on an exploration to try to find the way out. So they found the way out of the maze, but they haven't found the way out of here yet. Did they come across the knock first, the bandit room? In the maze? Um, I'm thinking whether or not they did. Give me a moment. Mm -hmm. um, screw it. Put it down to a die roll. <laughs> no, they did not. Mm. Probably better that they didn't. <laughs> so, yeah, this other door that Radra stranded next to... Um, the dervises came through that north door, and is this a door that Redrith is standing next to? Which he wants to open. That, that's the door that they came. <laughs> oh, that Redrith is. They came in through the north, the south yeah. one. Yes, correct. The the by Redrith that is also a door. There is a door on each of the the four walls: north, south, east, and west. So the north and east one, which you guys came through, and the north one, which the dervises came through. Well, the north one they came through, that's been opened. They came through um, and, and opened it on their way through. The doorway that currently um, Mizram and Hager standing in has been smashed open. That presumably was done by the wraiths when they came through. Um, oh. Actually, no, that brings, well, yeah, that brings up a good question because they didn't need to smash a door. So... Um, Yeah, we're going to say the Dragonborn kind of just knocked it down, running the hell out of there. Like, oh, screw okay. this. All right, then. But yeah, that one has been knocked down. But the other two doors in, in the room, the south and the west door, are still closed. And Redrith, do you want to send some globules in? And I'll take a, I'll walk in and see what's going on to our south. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. While they're doing that, I would like to listen at this door. So we'll open the south door and I will send a couple of light bulbs in the door. I'm going to open the door and then send light, light mm -hmm. bulbs in. Okay. Um, and Kayla Lily, meanwhile, go ahead and roll a um, perception check. Or, hold on. Yeah. Um, Kay Lily, you do not hear anything. Uh, where's Conlon watching? In, in his room. Where's Kieran watching? Um, yeah, so um, I'll open the door to the side and step in. 
What's that? I didn't check it. All right, let's see if Kieran's watching on his TV. And yeah, I'll, I'll walk to the end of the hallway because I'm sure the dancing lights isn't too far away. He's playing on his TV. Okay. Well, you can watch on my tablet. Fine. It's in the living room. So it, as you go in there, Varric, I'll just kind of follow along behind and just keep the light balls just a little bit ahead of you. Okay. My, my bad, and I don't stay back while my brother does anything. So. And as my, as I get farther away, the uh, the light the other light balls will follow me because if they get out of range, they'll just poof out. But the other guys have torches, so it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. All right, well, another hallway. Could we ask the dervishes if it seems like these two hallways are connected at the other end, or if? Yeah, they, they like tell it, you it seems like they came in a big circle around here too, also. So yeah, there okay. Probably, there probably is a bunch of interconnections. There's definitely not a um, point A to point B progression. And Kaylee didn't hear anything from the west door. Nope. Hmm. Should we check that door out before we go down this tunnel anymore? Or? I don't think it matters. Okay. Yeah. I'll uh if Redrith sends him out in front of me, I'll just take a few more steps forward. Yep. Sure. I'll come down and to here so I can have lights going back up towards the room and as well as I head down the hallway the other way. Now let's see. Um, so Kaylee, you have dark vision. Mizram does. Red dress. Um, yep, I'm high elf. I do. Was it, Dragonborn doesn't have dark nope, vision. Nope. Do not. <laughs> that seems surprising, but okay. All right. So, um, are you just following the shadows then, Fekish? Uh, I'm just kind of hanging out, figuring out where they're going, and keeping an eye on the dervishes. And wondering what's going on with the cat. <laughs> I, I have yet to be properly introduced to it other than it's a panther. Yeah, We're going to play the same game we did with Kale Lily for months and months. I and think months. we are. <laughs> Would this cat do that to you guys and girls? <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, so I'll just keep pressing down through. If nobody's saying stop, I'm just going to keep. And since the dervishes have home. torches, I'll just keep up with them. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Right. So I'll come up around the corner and make sure the light makes it all the way up. That's interesting that there's a wall here, but there's there was a door on the other side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I was curious about that west door. Like a, it seems a little closet or something. Right. Or it's there. There's a stairwell. It's an elevator. I don't know if I'd get into that fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> those are, by the way, those are doors. They are hard to see on either side there. Oh, okay. So there's one oh, to okay. the east of where I'm standing and to the west? Yes, correct. Okay. I'll just push open that east door to just make sure that it leads into that chamber we were already in. <laughs> Gonna lead to a corridor. Or not the east door. Yeah, yeah, the east door. The door to my right. <laughs> yeah. And then just... To is the is there a door on the, on the south wall of that corridor that Redrith just came out of. Kale is in and Fekish is in. Along the south wall there? No, you do not see any door along that south corridor. Okay. Or that east-west corridor along the south. However, there is one at the north end of that corridor that um, that uh, Haig is walking up. 
Mm. Oh, okay. A uh, Varric. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, I'm still with my brother. Sorry, I'm trying to grab the the notorious Big thing I was talking about and make a little. <laughs> I'm trying to clip it so it just does the give me the loot, give me the loot. <laughs> use it as a. All right, so you open the door to your right. Mm -hmm. It opens easily. It's not locked or barred in any way. And it actually leads to another chamber. Mm. Have we looked at the walls at any of these rooms? Like that... that uh... Octagonal room. Did we look at the walls to make sure there was no inscriptions or anything? We were too focused on the sword and the dervishes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's something to think about. We, we probably should have looked. At each end of this 10 foot wide, 20 foot long room, a sarcophagus faces towards the center. The carved features on the sarcophagi seem dark and terrible. Two wooden doors face each other from the center of the east and west walls. Hmm. Yeah, can I step in and just look for some inscriptions on the walls or any of the sarcophagi? If you I will to. move up. I will move up and uh, offer support. Lean on me. Exactly. So is that an investigation in the tower? Yeah, go ahead. I mean, pres I mean, you don't see anything obvious on the walls the way you have previously, but presuming you're like, okay, you know, you're you're looking for yeah. dust or brushing away debris, making sure that it's not hidden on any back surfaces, and yeah, you don't find any any inscriptions in either the room with the sarcophagi or the octagon. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. In the sarcophagi, seem. They're closed, like there's no, there's no, they're not open in any way, they're Correct. sealed up. Okay. Right. I have a bad feeling about this, but nothing's happening, so. <laughs> I'll step back out into the main hallway we were in there and, uh, yeah, defer to the group. Where, where are we going? Go down and open up the sarcophagus? I mean, what could go wrong? Do you right. want me to? I'll open it. No. I'm kidding. I'll, divine sense. Uh, let me walk back in there and cast divine sense. So I can detect any fiend, fey, or undead within 60 feet of me. Oh, I'm sorry. Ooh, what are you casting again? Uh, divine sense. It's a paladin feature. Okay. And. Uh, the presence of strong evil registers on your senses like a noxious odor and powerful good rings like heavenly music in your ears. As an action, you can open your awareness to detect such forces. Until the end of your next turn, you know the location of any celestial fiend or undead within 60 feet of you that is not behind total cover. Ooh, not behind I mean, total cover. If they're yep. in the sarcophagus, they're behind total cover. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I guess we'll just have to open them <laughs> within the same radius you also detect the presence of any place or object that has been consecrated or desecrated as with the hollow spell oh well, there's no limit on how much you can use this right um, I have one plus my charisma modifier so I think I have four uses oh there you go yep, two okay. All right, so um, you make use of it, and um, you get a general feeling of evil coming from the, the, the pyramid in itself, you know, mm. kind of all around you, but nothing strong and overwhelming, and definitely not from any specific direction. Okay. And I don't feel like these sarcophagi have been desecrated in any way? Not any more than the visages kind of just make you feel uncomfortable, but the divine sense right. doesn't uh, doesn't mm -hmm. get triggered any any further or any more substantially. I'll look at Redrith and say, "You want me to crack one open? Like, isn't that bad?" 
Mm. I'll pull it open. My innate curiosity really wants to open one, but Mine too. I'm not sure if we should. <laughs> well, there's, a door to your, there's a door to your left if you don't want to desecrate the sarcophagi. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. Like, I don't want to be the one that makes shit bad. But I'll tell everybody that when I did that, I did get <laughs> that feeling of evil from the entire place. This place has been ruined. <laughs> And just to uh, to clarify, and I think the divine sense probably would give you this sense, mm -hmm. the, the place is not a place of evil, but it's been tainted by it. Right. It's been desecrated in some way. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah, okay. I'm down the, okay, go so to the next the door. Okay, so party does know. Um, mm. Oh, yeah, speaking of which, we never kind of got into the details of that for Albi about what uh, the, the spirit shared with you guys, but you probably should share what you do recall with him so he knows oh, what, yeah. wh why you guys are here and not looking for a way out quite yet. And honestly, the dervishes kind of want to know, too. It's like, aren't you trying to get out? <laughs> We're here to break <laughs> the curse. <laughs> Bring water back to these lands. The lands are thirsty. Yep. You know what? I'm in racing. We're looking for the to... staff of ruling and the star gem of Mo Pilar. Those are the only items that can leave this place without further cursing every everything. So far, we've only found cursed swords. <laughs> <laughs> they both weren't cursed. Ah, true. Yeah, mine wasn't cursed. That we know of. <laughs> it, it could just, be cursed. That's why you're leaving last. Just the yeah. one I'll give. Just the one I gave Dan. Yeah. <laughs> so um, door okay. number two. So, so do, yeah. yeah, door number two. Yep. Uh, well, I was thinking for a moment it might actually make sense to uh, reshare the 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 little speech that he gave you when he ran into him outside. And don't forget also there's the, the book that you guys found which you translate. I can I can put the um I can put the speech in the Discord if people want to read it there. Sure. Uh, I I've, I've got it up right now, it's just about to. Oh, okay. All right, very good. So uh yeah, as a refresher, because I think it's probably been about two months since you guys actually have heard it, if not longer. Um, but for Albie's benefit, uh, obviously you guys wouldn't have relayed it quite as exactly, but um he'll have the guest of it. I am Amun Ray, son of Takos Ray of the house of Mo Pilar. That which you see is but my shadow, which has walked these lands for time uncounted, in search of mighty men of valor to plead their aid. In my time was I pharaoh of this land now before you. Then Bakar was a green and beautiful land, blessed by the gods of heaven westward, with the wondrous spring of Athos, which gave life to our land and nurtured our crops. Yet did robbers raid the tomes of my forefathers and take from them tokens of their passage into the lands of the dead, thus keeping them from their reward after life. I swore that at all costs, I would not fall prey to their evil deeds. So it was that I made mighty and terrible war upon my neighbors, plundering their lands of wealth for my own passage. I did enter a contract with a great mage to work a mighty wonder and upon the sweat and blood of my people, I did build a theft proof tomb. My people turned against me with bitter hatred. I not only robbed our borderlands, but taxed grievously my own people and so took from them their wealth. They rose up in anger, demanding their gold and precious gems, their lives and freedom. I cursed them saying, by the ruling staff and the star gem of Mopilar, I curse you. Threaten not my life or by them and by the holy name of Osiris will the stopping of my heart also stop the spring of Athos from her life-giving flow. As the river slows and dies, so shall your land wither in the wilderness. This do I swear by Osiris's holy name and these implements of my power. From a sea of upraised fists before me rose one with a spear. The shaft sped from the darkness, and so too that night did the spring of Athos stop its flow. In death, my spirit gleefully approached my pyramid, but Osiris stopped my spirit from entering that tomb, for said he, your monument to life was to be the benefit you brought to the people under your stewardship, not this edifice of stone. 
as you looked only to your death and life, so shall you look only to your life and death. I am bound to fulfill your curse, for you have called it down with power in my name. But I do curse you as well, Amun Ray. You shall not enter this tomb where the implements are of your voyage to heaven until some mortal soul does despoil this place, taking your staff of ruling and the star gem of Mopalar from your theft-proof tomb. Even have I talked with the wind in hope of help. Uncounted seasons have passed, and my kingdom is not now to be seen in these desert lands. Of it nothing remains save for my tomb, which stands now, as then, untouched by time, sand, wind, or men. Though many have tried to plunder my wealth, none has succeeded and I am forbidden passage to heaven until one succeeds. My wealth is thine if thou can but best that which I have built. Remove both my staff of ruling and the star gem from my tomb, so then you will gain great wealth, and so then you will release me. Follow my path to wealth or woe, to thy destiny or thy doom. So if we succeed, we can totally take the sword. <laughs> and, and nowhere does it say we can't plunder it. Yeah, it says if we succeed, we his well, it, we, everything here is ours. Score. That is true. That's awesome. We are. It, it, remember, it's the dervishes and their general attitude towards um, any theft mm -hmm. or plunder. So it's not necessarily the curse, but the social acceptance. How we just need to find a bag of holding to hide all this stuff in. How much <laughs> impact that'll have is up to you guys to decide. Or we can kill the dervishes and put them in the sarcophagi and nobody will know. I I was going to say fireball. It's all good. <laughs> so anyway, the that's fireball the fireball is everything, Red. <laughs> it absolutely is. What is it? There's it's very called... few, very few suitable app or very few problems that cannot be solved by a suitable application of high explosives. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Here, here. It, it's called splash damage, you babies. <laughs> <laughs> I can offer wine to the cleric. That's right. Oh, wait, we have a cleric now, don't we? We do. Yes. There you go. See? In That's time, it's because, of your, it's because of your propensity for fireball is why I chose a cleric, because I asked Keith, I said, what did they need the most in the group? He says, well, they don't have a cleric. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this has been doing just fine keeping us alive. Thank you very much. Yeah. Though you guys become very familiar with singe damage, that's for sure. <laughs> yes, maybe. Hey, it, it, do any of you have I beards? Like people when I heal them. I, I hope none of you have beards. <laughs> that was my last character. <laughs> we don't anymore. <laughs> Although my last character didn't end up with a beard either after the dragon was done. He again. ended up completely bald, like completely yeah. hairless because he kept having problems. <laughs> yes. Wild magic was not was not a not his friend. That's for sure. I don't know about that. You came out on top more often than the the more quirky stuff. I mean, you suddenly find your hand missing or your your the unicorn changed. that was good. Oh yeah, the we had a lot of fun with the rainbow unicorn. Did yeah, I turn he, was, he, in, he was he was quite helpful. I turned myself into a plant once, I think too. I, I mean, right. you, you lived up to your name, uh, Electro Wick. I mean, you literally yeah. conti rolled on, uh, was it Lightning uh, Spell? Yes. Yeah, I got the three hits of Lightning a couple times rolling his spells, and then I got shot by the dragon <laughs> with Lightning. So it all kind of evened out in the end. But I, I must right. point out, especially for Albi, that a, you chose Chaos Mage, and B, what I find most significant about it is that not once, but twice, you called up the same rainbow unicorn. <laughs> Good times. All right, though. Didn't, didn't, he, didn't he reattach somebody else's arm for us? Yeah, that's true. That's right. Austin's character needed his arm reattached. Good times. All right. So we can plunder away. Yep. We'll just have yep. to fight the guys on the way out. Perfect. Yeah, just make sure they're cool with it. Or if they're not, that they're fireballed, and then we don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Well, we can uh, take them on the way. Good old fireball. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. So what is your decision about the sarcophagi and the little intersection that you are currently at? Now that I'm it's done. Give me a loop. Give me a inclination is to leave the sarcophagi alone. Um, okay. But we should like open the door. Door number two. The door to the left, left, correct? Yes, correct. Correct. That door. That door. Really? That door. Okay. So let's see. You guys want me? I to mean, do... maybe somebody should like listen at it, or you know, but you know, we should probably open that door. It would be interesting to see what's on the other side. Yeah. That door opens up the sarcophagus. I got no problem opening it. All right, so you're just going to go ahead and open? Yeah. yeah. Open says me. There we go. Sorry. Now I just have to send that to Keith so that way he can use it as a trigger button when we start talking <laughs> about stuff. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll take a step in. No, oh, I'll just make it a lot easier on it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, these doors are not very clear. No, they're not, and I do intend to fix it, but unfortunately, the map resolution just isn't what I would like it to be. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm just going to stop when I step in and look at Redrith. All right, so let's see. Come peek corridor around the corner. Next to a corridor, next to a corridor. Yeah, yeah I can send. Yeah. I can send one. Uh, one light ball up there to the top, and then a couple into the other corridor, and send them each direction. Okay, so despite hey. it looking like a corridor. You might want to step back to your uh, entry point before I continue. <laughs> All right. So rather um, than it being the corridor that you it appears to be at the moment, a huge room greater than the extent of the light extends into the darkness. In its center, a giant block of black stone sits, its vertical walls covered with upright sarcophagi. Yes, sorry, the sarcophagi are missing. The faces that were carved into the coffin lids have been gouged out by deep claw marks. Four wooden doors lead into this room. Two on the east wall? That description is off. Three doors lead into this room. One on the east wall and two on the west wall. So I have to expose a little more of what you would actually see here. And let me know some of the doors are actually missing, but that might actually make it easier for them to be seen. Door, door, door. Okay. And there are upright sarcophagi surrounding this that are invisible on the map, but we can actually see them. Correct. Yeah, they're all upright around the outer edge. So there's like four of them on the north and south edges and oh no, sorry, two of them on the north and south edges and four each on the east and west sides. 
Let's just start okay. flinging them open. <laughs> We're not desecrating the sarcophagi if we can help it. <laughs> Does the sword do anything as we come into this area? My new oh, yeah, there's a total of 12 sarcophagi. So when I step in here, does anything happen to the sword? Is it glowing or humming or anything? Nope, not at the moment. Okay. Okay, I'm peering around this corner up here. Okay. And I will make sure, and and, oh, I suppose you can see in the dark, so, so that's not too bad. And is that a door directly across from me? A what? A door directly across from me. Yes, that is. Yes. Okay. It's all doors. <laughs> We're all going to die, man. It's either a door or it's a wall masquerading as a door. They do that sometimes. And sometimes the doors decide they want to pretend to be walls. So I say we asked the dervishes where they came from. Like which direction did they enter <laughs> into this area? Yeah, that's true, because they might know Yeah, the safe ways to go, and then we can kick off the fights we want to kick off. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, first, let me move them up. I need to find hotkeys for switching map modes over here. Um, yeah, there is no hotkey to switch in and out of mask mode. It's very annoying. It's been asked. Well, maybe they'll add it at some point then, and without having to wait 10 years for it. Okay, so um, they say, no, we don't know very much about the area. We've basically came in a big circle. We know up up through that door is an empty pantry way with a dead dwarf, but, um, and then it swings around to the left over there also with another statue, but we had not discovered much else around here either. Hmm. What about the room with the, the other 12 some odd sarcophagus? No, we had not come Have across that yet. All right. Yes, yeah, honestly, that, that was the coming into that Go room ahead. that we met you in was the first door that we dared to open. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. All right, then. Should I check out the sarcophagi? Or are we going to leave him be? Maybe we should inspect like between and behind the sarcophagi without actually disturbing them. Um, yeah, yeah. What's the, what was the description of this thing in the center again? One the second. tall black stone. In its center, a giant block of black stone sits in its vertical walls covered with upright sarcophagi. The okay. faces that were carved into the coffin lids have been gouged out by deep claw marks. Is there the the this stone? Is there space between the top of the black stone and the ceiling? Yes, there is. Okay. This How tall is the stone? Don't. Don't bamf again. Don't get on top of there and disappear again, would you? <laughs> Maybe. Should I touch it? <laughs> I'm going to touch it. Um. <laughs> so, yeah, so, the room itself is about 30 feet tall, and the block itself is about 12 feet tall. Okay. And so then the, the sarcophaguses are part of the block or are the, um, are the sarcophaguses in front of the block? 
um, a non-careful inspection shows that they appear to be part of the block, at least that they are fused to, the bases are fused to it. Hmm. When I touch the block, do I feel warmth or anything? I'll reach around the sarcophagus and touch the block. And boom, roll a new character. <laughs> Hold on one second. All right, so what was that question again, Jim? I, I reach, I don't touch the sarcophagus itself, but I reach around and touch the block itself to see what it feels like. Is it warm to the touch? Is it, you know, is it extremely smooth? Does it feel like, you know, obsidian volcanic rock or is it rough like granite or... You yeah, know, it's that kind of probably thing. Um, like obsidian or um, or uh, what else am I thinking of? Onyx. Yes, thank you. It, it's definitely yeah. glass-like and very, very dark. Okay, I go back up to this corner, settle down in the corner, and cast Detect Magic. It's ritual, so it's I will settle in and while they do what they do. Yeah, I'm, I'll take a couple of rounds around this room, staying away from the center, but just take a, oh, come on. Oh, come on. So I'm not using a spell slot, but it is gonna take 10 minutes. So if we happen upon an encounter while I'm casting that, then so be it. But then I'll be able to see if it's magical or something like that. Because I'm very intrigued by anything that smacks of the arcane or, you know, yeah. mysteries of, of the universe. Are. I'm pretty that sure we're really. You You're pretty sure what, Dan? Never mind. Never mind. You're pretty sure we're all going to die, man. <laughs> we're all going to die. Yeah. Um. I'm thinking that Matt or I could lift each other up and fairly uh, get to the top of the look oh, at the yes. top of the block. Yeah, see what's on top of it. Sure. You want to do that? Yeah. I yeah. Think so that was good. See if we see anything like, uh, I mean, like silly things like rays of heat like when heat hits blacktop or the mirage you know, yeah the heat mirage yeah anything like that yeah i'll let you get up on my shoulders if you want um actually i guess barring a one uh, dexterity roll it's not going to be that hard but yeah, because okay. you know there are definitely places on each of the sarcophagi that you could um, get up on. Now, Stick a foot. If you want to get up there without touching the sarcophagi. That's going to require a skill check. All right. Yeah, I, I would say without touching them. <laughs> yeah, let's let's just do the the because we're brothers. We're there's there's no uh, sense of being weird if you were to pick me up. You know, get the arms under the buttocks and lift. Correct. So whoever's doing the lifting, do a strength check. Whoever's do, being lifted, do an acrobatics check. Okay. All right. Are we still allowed to change Not athletics? To be in the tower. Are we allowed to swap athletics to acrobatics or no? Oh, uh, athletics, athletics for strength, yes. Not for acrobat. Not for the person being lifted, though. Okay. So we might want to do this the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> You both did very. You both did fine. Either way you look at it. Right. I have a negative two to my acrobatics, Matt. <laughs> well, I have a plus. Two, yeah. But... And yeah, you shouldn't be. Definitely... Yeah, you shouldn't be climbing. You should be lifting. It doesn't matter. Do you still got you guys. Both still got a twenty-six. So nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, like I said, that one did not need to be put in the tower, but because um, you would know right away whether or not you succeeded or failed. That's right. right so as you were, uh, you know, 
perceived from when you entered the room in the first place, it just seems like a large glass box, though, without the, um, well, not glass, but dark black box. And, um, you know, without the sarcophagi lining the top surface, it's a solid sheet of black rock that is almost flawless. Uh, impressive. Hmm. It does. Um, what are you guys using for light? Do one of you have a torch? I thought uh, we had the globules, the dancing lights up still. Yes, oh, Jim yeah, and Redworth is down there controlling them. So, yeah, you can see the reflections of the dancing lights reflecting off of it as if you were looking at the moon in a pond at night. Yeah, is there any dust on the top of it? Um, nope. Gonna... Minimal. 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 Hmm. Um, Amon Ra has good housekeeping. Yeah, he does. <laughs> So, yeah, I say we just wait for Redra to see what's going on in here. Before well, we he's going to, before he jumps up on the box, though, which I know is something that he might just do. I have a bottle of Sinar. I have a <laughs> bottle of Sinar. And I think I'm going to see what happens if uh, I treat it like an offering on top of the box. Because even if it's an offering, a bottle of Sinar isn't necessarily a bad thing to send as an offering, right? What's Sinar? Like whiskey? Yeah, like a, a wine, like an alcohol. Yeah, I think that's a good offering. Does anyone know what it's distilled from? Inspiration, if anyone gets it. I don't. Going once? Going oh, twice. Cool. Artichokes. 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 Oh. Not sure where it comes from originally, but it was a no drink kidding. that my parents used to keep around. All right, well, I'm going to offer my bottle of Sinar unless anybody objects. No, do it. Yeah, i tell you to do it. So I'm in the hallway. The I can't see what's going on. There, or are you pouring it, or what exactly you're doing with it? I think I will, being, being spiritual and them not having fingers, they could be upset with me with not being able to open the bottle, so I'll pour it. Okay. One for the homies. Ooh. <laughs> so it's for Amon Ray. <laughs> That's right. One for my homies. Interesting. Okay, so nothing substantial. You know, don't, you don't see any magic or ethereal mists or anything else like that come out of it. But it does seem to have an interesting effect on the surface that allows you to, I don't want to say see through it, but you're able to tell that it is not solid all the way through. Oh. Should we smash it? <laughs> I wonder if idea. we should, I wonder if we should. Hulk smash. Wait a second. Wait a second. Our water skins have some of the special water in it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try to pour some of our special water from the river of Athos on it. That's a good I'm idea. Take, I'm going to take half of my, wa half my water skin and I'm going to pour it on it. Seeing that, seeing if that does anything different. No, it doesn't seem to have any additional effect in this case. It just seems that the, um, the, the, <laughs> refractive properties of the liquid allow you to um, see deeper through the surface. All right, let's see if we can crack it, Maddie. Let's see if we can find some wizard. seams. Well, wait, the wizard's going to try to jump on the box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's like, he's checking out the magic, man. I know, but we have proof that he makes irrational decisions. <laughs> well, I mean... Hey, I represent that remark. Idea. <laughs> like that's why i keep being like you guys want me to touch it because last time i told somebody else to do something they disappeared so <laughs> it, is this where the glyphs is gonna like do a magic trick where they just pull the wizard out the box once he jumps that's in? <laughs> right. <laughs> all right i want to open the box i'm looking at the wizard to see what his reaction is 
Well, I'm still cat. If you guys have talked oh, yeah. for less than ten minutes, I'm still casting detect magic. So I haven't. I I'm not paying attention to my surroundings right now. All right, yeah, we'll wait for but the as soon fucking as, wizard. But as soon as I'm done, I can absolutely cast the jump spell to jump up on top. No problem. <laughs> All right, I'm sitting down, crisscross applesauce, and looking at looking at Varric going. We'll wait for the wizard. <laughs> All right, so you're, you're jumping up there, Redruth? Uh, well, as soon as my... What do I see when I cast, uh, when I'm done with my ritual detect magic? Oh, on the on the box? I Yeah, well, it'll show me everything around me. It says, for the duration, you sense the presence of magic within 30 feet of you. Uh, if you sense magic in this way, you can use your action to see a faint aura around any visible creature or object in the area that bears magic, and you learn its school of magic, if any. The spell can penetrate most barriers, but it is blocked by one foot of stone, one inch of common metal, a thin sheet of lead, or three feet of wood or dirt. You get the faintest, faintest hint of necromantic energies emanating from deep within the block. That's what I was concerned about. <laughs> so so I will I will mention that I'll say okay, well there's there is a uh, necromancy involved in this box which you kind of can expect by seeing the sarcophagus is kind of glued to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's hop on top. <laughs> hop on pop. I would say you'd one of the that one of the Zeus books that happen. they they decided not to keep publishing. That's <laughs> what I was gonna ask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all we need, all we need, is the book burning. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, does somebody want to go on top? Well, it directly. Uh, oh, I better not make that joke. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it is. It is. Uh, We're in dangerous territory. To a, <laughs> it, is, yeah, exactly. it is we've reached the top of the hour do we want to uh, hold on this yeah this is a good spot i think yeah are yeah, we gonna open the box the what's in the box i was gonna say just in, in, in uh what's his face in seven what's in the yeah. box <laughs> oh. it, it, it's up to you guys yeah. No, I agree. Now would be a good time to to call it. This would be a good place to start next right round out. out. Right at the base of this uh, strange obsidian stone, and right, that you just, just feel so inclined to to mess with. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, one of the items we need might be in the box, Trapped like inside the using stone. using yeah whatever yeah, yeah. helping helping push the necromancy who knows or that's why the wraiths popped up because maybe the cleric got a little bit too close to something that could be too. and this generates the wraiths there's what 12 sarcophagi we only killed two wraiths and can oh you kill gosh. one you know what i mean like can you even kill a wraith <laughs> well you managed to vanquish them or whatever you want to call it yeah expel i don't know Oh, yeah, this is a good spot. Exercise, there you go, yeah. Exor, yeah. not exer. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to use this uh, little clip, Keith, where would I send it? Do you have a phone number I can text it to you? Uh, yeah. Hold on a second. Which clip was that? Give me the loot one. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you just want to add a little flavor later in the game or something. <laughs> I, you know, don't get me wrong. You know, I wanted to do Sirenscape and other things, but I decided to uh, trim back on the background audio because A, bandwidth issues, and B, um, not to blame you, Alex, but we, I wanted to minimize the bandwidth um, that you, you needed in order to make sure you could stay connected without any hiccups. Thanks. <laughs> Um, let's see. You could do like another Zoom channel, though, maybe, right? Like, and run that through the background of the Zoom. That's how we did it with Discord at one point. Mm -hmm. 
Jim underlaid a audio track. The volumes on it were just a little sensitive. The the Dragonlance campaign that I I do manage to play um, uh, um, on alternating Mondays, uh, he uses Serenscape to pretty good effect. That's awesome. Yeah, and Zoom's gotten a little better about being able to pipe in background sounds, but it doesn't necessarily come with a, a, a library of stuff ready to go. Right. But yeah, I've been thinking about getting myself one of those, um, you know, I forget what you call them. Uh, Albie, you probably know those uh, boxes with a bunch of buttons, one for each different kind of sound. Some of them you can program them and whatnot. Oh, yeah, oh, like a stream uh, deck. Yeah, yeah like exactly. Deck, yeah. yeah, yeah I have they, a stream deck here in front of me. It's pretty cool. You do. There's an open. There's an open source version that uh, um, runs on a phone or a tablet or something too. I oh actually, really? I'll have to check that one out because I actually did see the Stream Deck um, on display at Best Buy last week, and I was like, "Oh, cool!" So I got a chance to actually see. It. That's one thing I do miss about you know having retail stores you can just go to. But. And the the buttons on the Stream Deck, it's the physical buttons are cool, but there's also that that costs you know whatever it costs it's 80 bucks or 100 bucks or whatever it is for the actual box how many buttons but, you got. but yeah but then you can also get by the app for your phone or tablet that will mimic the stream deck and use the same uh piece on your computer to do it so you can run it from your phone or the physical and how would stream it connect to box. your pc if you're over the network network it's just a wife yeah it's like a yeah. network connect to it it's pretty cool and well, my, my what was ours was called, wireless, Maddie? So. Do you remember what our pad, our uh, our sound pad was that. called? Yeah, I can't. Was, no, I was actually thinking about that too. So, <laughs> Doctor Something or Mister Something? Oh. That's what I was thinking. Of. Oh, and there's another app called Companion, which is a lot like Stream Deck, but it's you know a different brand kind of thing. So, so many options, so many tools. Doctor Sample. Time to keep up. It was called Doctor Sample. There you go, Doctor Sample. Oh. Yeah, but this was a, this was a, for like a DJ or a band of that wanted samples put into to their music, and it was MIDI. It had a MIDI out and stuff like that. And it was, I don't know. Well, Albie and I actually used to do DJ stuff, so you know we, we kind of play around with the audio stuff, but um, it, it basically the same purpose. You're just injecting uh, audio and in for, for a different purpose, but right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm going to kill the recording. We're going to call session 21 a wrap.